Today, we're gonna to see a real world example of when to use an abstract class. By the end of this sprint, we're gonna have fully functioning flight planning and flight time estimating software for the customer. Rayanne, we're good on test coverage? We're good. All right, fantastic. Bishard Ranson himself, the chairman of Southwest Airlines, is gonna be here to check out our software, so it's gotta be perfect. Not so fast, nerds. Circle back, Jack! I just got back from a meeting with Bishard Ranson himself. Turns out we have to factor in the wait time for weight turbulence on the runway when we're figuring out our total flight time. Weight turbulence? It sounds like you just made that up. Did you Au contraire, mon frere. Weight turbulence is a function of an aircraft producing lift. This creates counter-rotating vertices that trail behind the aircraft. Aircraft that want to take off have to wait for these counter-rotating vertices to settle before it's safe. The amount of time they wait depends on the size of the airplane that just took off. Southwest is so concerned about it that they had me experience it for myself. Are you sure this is safe, bro? Oh, don't be a melt all your life! Get on out there and feel the power of that General Electric! Whoa! Ergo, weight turbulence is quite real and must be accounted for with every possible variant of aircraft that's going to take off before yours. Circle back, Jack. When you went to school, did you go to school on the big yellow bus or the little yellow bus? Neither. I went to school on the party bus. Hit it! I'll circle back tomorrow. Peace out, nerds! Okay, okay, so Circle Back Jack needs this new functionality by tomorrow, and it has to work across all airplane types. Well, this is a pretty good use case for an abstract class. Now, you might know the difference between an interface and an abstract class, but when would you actually use an abstract class? This could be an interview question because the interviewer might want to know whether you just have surface knowledge of the difference between interfaces and abstract classes, or whether you've actually used abstract classes before. Now, before we get started, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you agree with me or you don't agree with me. I want to hear from you. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And the code for this is going to be on my GitHub or my website. Now, wake turbulence actually is a real thing. If you ever found yourself sitting on the runway and you're going, why are we sitting on the runway? There's no other planes on the runway. Why don't we take off? It's because of wake turbulence. The aircraft in front of you actually disturbed the uh, air so much that you have to wait for that air to settle again. Now, the FAA has different rules describing how long you should wait, depending on the size of the aircraft that just took off before you. Bigger aircraft disturb more air and you have to wait longer. So if you're developing software that plans flight times, it makes sense to try to get in back of a smaller plane instead of a larger plane, because the less time you idle on the runway, the less fuel you use, the more money you save. So first, I'm going to show you how Craptech created their original software, which doesn't use abstract classes. Okay, so back when Southwest Airlines was a small airline, they only flew the 737. So when Craptech created their flight planning software, they only factored in the 737 because they needed to get this done fast. So as you can see, there's all these properties and all these methods inside here that are just focused on the 737, like this thing here, the trim wheel check. But then one day, I just found out there's other kinds of airplanes. So we're going to add the 757 to our Southwest fleet. And your project manager is like, we need to add the code for the 757 in by like tomorrow, bro. Okay, don't panic. We can do this. I mean, the 737 and the 757 are both aircraft, right? So let's just take public class aircraft and we'll copy it and we'll paste it. And instead of calling it aircraft, we'll call it aircraft 757. Okay, so now we just got to modify the properties. Okay, the ETOPS is 180, fuel capacity. Okay, so I think we should be good. Okay, so we made our deadline, but we definitely made it at a cost. I mean, we just duplicated functions like this weight capacity check. That exists in aircraft as well. And here's another thing. If you take a look down here, trim wheel check. This exists in Aircraft 757. There's no trim wheels in the 757. That's just a 737 thing. So we may have introduced a really weird bug, and we have a method in there that doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, at least we got the 757 working, right? But then... Today, Southwest enters the commuter aviation market with our new Beechcraft propeller-driven plane. 
All right, all right, all right, all right. We can do this. All right, so let's just copy aircraft and we'll paste it in. And this time we'll just call it aircraft beachcraft and we'll take all of the the properties and we'll copy it and we'll paste it in there and oh shoot jet engine check trim wheel check uh, i don't want to remove those but i need to check the propellers so we'll just do uh like copy paste and call it prop check if you've ever been looking at old code and you're like what the heck is this method for it's probably because the original developers really didn't think about how to scale their problem and they just tried to cut and paste their way out of the situation which just made it worse now circle back jack wants us to add in this calculate flight time method and really that isn't so hard to do the the method is trivial but now we have to add this method to aircraft 757 and aircraft beachcraft because we had cut and pasted those classes and this isn't so bad because it's just three classes, but what if it were 300? I mean, this is madness. If you ever find yourself cutting and pasting to get functionality, you need to stop and think about how you can do this better because sooner or later, I just found out about Spice and apparently I don't own any of it. So today I'd like to introduce Southwest Galactic. Today you'll be able to take a Southwest plane into space. So let's see how an abstract class can save the day. Now remember, an abstract class cannot be instantiated. Its sole existence is for something else to inherit from it. And when you do inherit from that abstract class, you get all the stuff that was in that abstract class. Okay, now to start, I'm going to create my abstract class. Now in this case, I'm going to call it abstract aircraft. Do yourself a favor, don't use the prefix abstract to describe an abstract class. I'm only doing it in this case to show you the difference between the abstract aircraft and the old aircraft. Okay, I'm gonna add my member variables and my properties, and I'm gonna add some methods in here. Now the methods I'm adding are only going to be the kinds of method that are useful for all types of aircraft. So weight capacity check, that's universal. Manifest check, that's universal. Your flight route, that's universal. So these are all methods that are universal to every kind of aircraft. All right, so let's make a 737 inherit. So I'm gonna create the 737 class. I'm gonna say, hey, I want you to inherit from abstract aircraft. Okay, now I'm gonna create a constructor and I wanna show you something. I can actually access all of the methods like crew check that were in the abstract class. So you only have to write methods once for the abstract class, and then everyone that inherits from that abstract class gets those methods in the abstract class for free. Now, I want to show you something else. Abstract aircraft has a couple of private member variables, ETOPS, fuel capacity, gallons per minute. And if you notice, if you go to aircraft 737, which derives from the abstract class, you can't actually access those member variables, and that's because they're private. This is actually a pretty common mistake since we use public and private so darn often. But if you declare something private in your abstract class, anything that inherits from that abstract class won't be able to reach it. Instead, what you need to do is declare it protected. Now, if we go back to the 737 class, you'll see we're actually able to access those previously private member variables because now they're protected and accessible from the derived class. So put a pin in that. It could be a future interview question. I just gave you a real world use case for the protected access modifier. Okay, let's finish up loading up these member variables. That looks pretty good. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two methods into this derived class that are exclusive to the 737, trim wheel check and jet engine check. Okay, so now let's go test this out. If I go to a concrete version of the 737, in this case, I call it my aircraft, I can view the fuel capacity that is in the abstract class. I can perform a fuel check, a manifest check, but I can also get the stuff that's exclusive to the 737, such as the jet engine check and the trim wheel check. Okay, it took a little time to set up, but now we can see how easy it's going to be to add a 757. Let me show you. Okay, let's create this 757 class. I'm going to inherit from abstract aircraft. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our constructor, we're gonna add in our member variables, and we're gonna add in this jet engine check method because all jet engines have to have this jet engine check method. Okay, so let's test out our new 757. Uh, let's go to my 757. I wanna show you something here. 
you notice you have all this stuff uh, that came in the abstract class and you have the jet engine check, but you don't have that trim wheel check because it's exclusive to the 737. Hey, we can do the same thing with the Beechcraft and get everything for free. So let's create the class Beechcraft and we're going to inherit from the uh, abstract aircraft. Now we just have to add in the stuff that's specific to the Beechcraft. And heck, we don't need check jet engine. We can just do a check propeller engine and it's here where it makes the most sense. So now do you see how useful abstract classes can be? It speeds up development and it reduces the chances of making a mistake through all that cutting and pasting. Okay, but do you wanna see something really cool? We all know that C Sharp does not support multiple inheritance. So can an abstract class inherit from another abstract class? Yeah, it can. All right, watch this. I'm gonna create an abstract class called abstract jet, and I'm going to inherit from abstract aircraft. Okay, now in abstract jet, I'm just gonna put jet related functions like jet engine check. And you know what? I'm gonna create an abstract prop class as well that's gonna inherit from abstract aircraft, and it's gonna have the check propeller engine method in there. So let's create another jet to see how this works. Okay, so let's create a 707 and have that inherit from abstract jet. So let me put a constructor here to show you something. Now, I get everything here. I get everything from the abstract class that we originally had and the jet engine check from abstract jet. We can do the same thing for the propeller plane. So now do you see the power of abstract classes? They allow you to logically group items of different categories while reusing the code you've already written. So let's go back to the beginning of this video where Circle Backjack had asked everyone to add another method that would calculate weight turbulence wait time and add that to the flight time. Now, if you had been using abstract classes, this would be trivial. Let me show you how trivial. Okay, we're gonna go to abstract aircraft and we're gonna drop in our methods right here. Calculate flight time, calculate flight time with idle, calculate wake turbulence weight. It doesn't really matter what these methods are, just know that I dropped them inside the abstract aircraft class. Okay, now just by dropping those methods inside the abstract class, if I go to 707, calculate flight time, calculate flight time with idle is there. If I go to 757, Calculate flight time. Calculate flight time with idle is there. If I go to the 737, calculate flight time. Calculate flight time with idle is there. The methods that I dropped into the abstract class are there. They propagate down immediately. This saves so much time. Now you might say to yourself, well, Ryan, I mean, this is great, but why don't I just create a utility class and then put calculate flight time with idle and wake turbulence weight inside the utility class and then any class can use it. And yeah, you can do that. And honestly, if we're using a procedural language like C, yeah, we probably would do it that way. But if you think about it, why are we using an object-oriented language like C Sharp if we're just going to do things in a procedural C-like way? I mean, it makes sense to use a utility or helper class if you have this thing that's used by a lot of other things that doesn't seem to fit in any place else. But this isn't a general math library. The only classes using this calculate wait flight time method are going to be other aircraft. So why tightly couple your code to a utility class is just going to make things harder to test. And utility classes tend to become the dumping ground for new ideas. Or when someone wants to try something or do a one-off solution, this is where they put it. I mean, if you've ever seen something like calculate flight time with idle. And then when you're looking through more of these utility classes, there's these other calculate flight time with idle regional, calculate flight time with idle global, calculate flight time with idle global three. I mean, which one are you supposed to use? I mean, usually when you see something like that, it's because someone created a utility method to solve a problem, and then someone else created a different utility method to solve a similar, but not quite the same problem, and then someone created a third method to solve a similar problem, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you gotta admit, abstract classes can be a little more elegant. So when would you use an abstract class? You would use it when you want to provide a commonly implemented functionality among all implementations of a derived class. Good luck on your next interview. And uh, this right here is- Ah, oh, are these my engineers? Uh, no sir, that's a, that's a vending machine. Uh, your engineers are over there. Jolly good! What a lovely bunch of coconuts! Now, how did you get my Southwest Galactic software done so fast? Oh, we use an abstract class. It's not rocket science. Yeah!